What's going on, YouTube? How you doing, guys? So sorry, I took a little while to get on this time, guys. I had a really, really crazy day. Hope you're all doing well. So let me just... What's going on, guys? I hope you're all well. Thank you so much for coming through. So sorry for me taking so long. I know I was supposed to be on a while ago. Um, testing, testing. Um, yeah, forgive me, though. So guys, I hope you're all well. What's going on? How is your Wednesdays? Uh, I hope you're doing blessed. Mic volume is a little low. What about now? Can you hear me? John Kennedy, what's good, man? <laughs> is this still low? What's, good? what's going on, guys? Let me know in the chat if you can hear properly. What's going on, Will? Brian, my man, thank you so much. Finally caught the beginning. <laughs> thank you so much for coming through. Sounds good now. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That is very, very importante that you guys can hear. Um, I hope you're all well. What's going on? <laughs> How are you, Rich Mitch? Nice to see you all. Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Alexander, Mr. Will. It's a pleasure. Sounds good now. Perfect. 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 Um, so, guys, I hope you're all well. I'm about to put on a little something, something, because, you know, I like a little, I like a little something. Okay. Because, um, you know, music is, music is important. A vibe is, a vibe is important. What's going on, guys? I'm that cologne guy, E, and this is Simply Put Sin. And guys, thank you so much for coming on the live stream. It's a pleasure. I hope you're all doing very, very well. It's an amazing day. It's beautiful outside. It's a little cool, but, you know, didn't need a coat today. So always, always a good thing. Um, I lost one of my... Hmm. I'll figure it out. Anyway, guys, I hope you're all doing great. What is your scent of the day? Please let me know. I have a bunch of fragrances on me today. <laughs> I couldn't choose just one, so I was a little bit adventurous, and I went off um, with a bunch of different things. So, uh, <laughs> oh, no. Um, it is definitely, definitely, um, definitely a lot going on on my skin and clothes today. But you know what I wore today, guys? I wore Hedonistic by Clive Christian today. Oof. If you guys have never, ever tried Hedonistic by Clive Christian, you got to get your nose on that fragrance. It is just, whew. It is just, it's a lot. <laughs> Every time I wear this fragrance and I walk out of the store or when I'm walking around the store and I wear this fragrance, I am consistently told how great I smell. So I think, I think, I think I trust what people tell me. And uh, yeah, it is amazing. Um, let's see, what are your scents of the day? Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, let's see, Mr. Calvarino, no lie, one of my hidden gems is Fahrenheit Aqua. That flanker is so known in the Fragcom, but it's so classy, fresh, and mature. Nice. They don't make a lot of freshies that work with a man anymore. A lot of freshies, it feels like, belong on a high school skin, a high school dude skin. But very few fragrances that are fresh today feel like they're made for men, especially in the designer world. Most niche fragrances that are fresh 
a lot of men will wear those, but uh, yeah, it's just, you know, interesting how that works. My scent of the day is Guerlain Ohm. Okay, Guerlain Homie by Guerlain. <laughs> awesome, Professor X. That's a great, great fragrance. Guerlain Ohm is awesome. Uh, and absolutely, it was a pleasure to, um, to send you an email, Mr. Dude, Mr. X, <laughs> Mr. X. Uh, it was a pleasure to respond to your email. Um, thank you so much for reaching out and, as always, offering your opinion on things, bro. You know, you're a very opinionated dude, and I really appreciate, you know, your perspective on a lot of things. It's really, really interesting. Um, let's see. Scent of the day, BTV Dosman. I have never heard of that, Mr. Alexander. You got to put me on, Charles. Like, what is BTV Dosman? Never even heard of that. Like, is that the brand BTV? Hmm, interesting. Um, let's see. <laughs> Verduresco. Let's see. Nothing special, Jimmy Two Man Blue trying to finish it off. Okay, Jimmy Two Man Blue, I get what you mean by that. Still a very, very pleasant experience. Still a very easy to wear experience also. Um, it is a little bit unknown. Not something everyone knows about, um, but still a beautiful fragrance. Um, thank you so much, Samaat, for coming through. One of my favorite names. Out of my audience members, really, really dig that name. Has a lot of meaning to me. I'm very much into ancient Egyptian culture, so that name means a whole lot. Um, very, very beautiful. And um, ah, just left the mall, <laughs> and I tried that Burberry Hero. Man, that stuff is a scrubber. Oh yeah. I don't know what it is about Burberry, but they haven't had a fragrance that I wanted to try or wear in a very long time. I think London was the last Burberry fragrance that I thought was worth buying, to be honest with you. Um, it's a shame how that is. That's a great, great brand name. And it's unfortunate that they never create things that are worthy of the name Burberry, you know, in my opinion. Um, if I was Burberry, I would just copy a bunch of Penhaligans and call it a day. <laughs> I'm just saying, um, you know, London, London, it just makes some sense, you know. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, no, scented moments, what's good? Oh, my man, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. Watch your channel all the time. Your sin of the day is Jacques Fock. Vetiver Gris. Awesome, awesome, awesome fragrances. Jacques Fock is a fragrance brand that, it's another brand that does really beautiful things that a lot of people ignore. It's fascinating how that works. Um, but you know me, I'm, I'm all for a fragrance that most people ignore because I prefer to smell unlike other people. So not hating on that, just saying. Um, very, very interesting. Uh, but my scent of the day is Hedonistic by Clive Christian. Let me show you guys the fragrance that I am talking about. So Hedonistic is, woof, it is a beautiful, beautiful experience by Clive Christian. The only thing with this particular fragrance, um, with Hedonistic, Oh man, I mean, I just, I just really, really, really love this fragrance. And every time I smell it, every time I smell it, I just think it's special. And this is the fragrance that I'm talking about. I think a bunch of you know this scent, but in case you don't, I want you to see it. This is the fragrance I'm talking about. It's called Jump Up and Kiss Me Hedonistic Clive Christian. Uh, now this fragrance is insanity. Look at that rating, although I have to tell you, in my opinion, it should be much, much higher than 4.06. Um, I would say 4.4, 4.3, which would put it in the top echelon of fragrances on, fragr on fragrance, on Fragrantica. Um, Julie Pluchet is the perfumer behind this brand, and I'm not familiar with her work. I'm curious really quick what else she has done. Hmm, 
Dunhill, Atkinson. She did the entire Jump Up and Kiss Me line by Clive Christian, which all were very, very interesting and beautiful. Um, oh, she did Golf Le Fleur? She did, <laughs> she did Golf Le Fleur. Unbelievable. French Waltz. So guys, really, really off the top. This is a fragrance that is done by, oh my God, wait a minute. Um, Tyler, the creator, came out with this line. It's called the Golf Le Fleur is the brand. The fragrance is called French Waltz. And he actually, this is the craziest thing. I met, I met Tyler, the creator. He came to the Atelier Cologne Boutique when he was researching fragrances to come out with this particular fragrance called Golf Le Fleur. And I remember when he came to, um, when he came to Atelier Cologne, he said to me, bro, I'm about to come out with my own fragrance. You have to be a part. You have to smell it. You have to let me know if I'm on the right track or not, because I guess I really impressed him when we did our consultation at the Atelier Cologne Boutique. And he was like right in the middle of considering what fragrances he wanted, what, what direction of fragrance he wanted to, to go down, you know? Um, and I was absolutely shocked when I got my nose on Golf Le Fleur, French, wa French Waltz, because I was like, whoa, he actually came out with a fragrance that was on point. I mean, guys, a lot of times, you know, rappers, you know, they, they create a fragrance line and you're like, yeah, okay. But honestly, this fragrance, very, very, very well done. Although I can't lie, guys, it's definitely on the prettier side. So if you're a guy who doesn't want to smell on the prettier side, this might not be your favorite scent, but it literally smells like a perfect fragrance for a rainy day. I know that sounds weird, but when you smell it, it would make perfect sense. It's like the, it's like a really great fragrance for a rainy day. And um, I'm really a huge fan, um, but you know, of course it's not for everyone, gotta tell you right now. But yeah, so anyway, <laughs> Yes, Kiss Me Hedonistic is that fragrance that I'm wearing. I don't know why I went into a tangent, but that's what I do. Forgive me. <laughs> this is allowed, so you know how that goes. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, my favorite Burberry is Burberry Brit Rhythm Intense. It's discontinued. See, the Burberry Brits, they were appealing. They were very attractive with those interesting plaid like um, translucent bottles, that was all cool and all. And I really, really dug the plaid like style of the bottles, man. But they just felt so basic. They felt so generic. They were clean. They were interestingly clean, but not interesting for my taste. But I do think they're really, really, really approachable and very, very interesting. The only thing is they're just so light, the Burberry Brits. You know, I just felt they were really light, but I'm curious about Rhythm Intense because I even, I don't even, I never smelt an intense fragrance from Burberry. So I'd be really curious to smell what that is like. Um, this is my favorite season. Okay. Let's see. This is my favorite season for fragrances. I tend to wear a lot of Bonds too. Bond is one of the only brands and perfume that I typically ignore. Okay, Bond, Man, not Mancera, Bond, Montal, and Byredo. Those are three fragrance brands off the top of my head that I kind of overlook on purpose because to me, they're fragrance brands that make perfumes that to me don't measure up to the price point. You know, the fragrances are nice, but they just never wow me and they don't just, they don't feel worthy of the price that I'm, having to pay for them. So that's one of the reasons why I kind of overlook them. And also because they're so popular and they're so like, you know, especially Byredo. Byredo is like that it brand and it brands don't really, I usually ignore it brands. So yeah. <laughs> um, Bond, Bond I ignore because of the owner. Not my favorite type of person, but I am extremely, extremely, impressed by her by her talent 
So the owner of Bond, I don't know if you know, this person is a very, very fascinating individual. Um, she is known for making people who work for Bond write their entire resume and cover letter in their handwriting because she takes your handwritten cover letter and she analyzes it to see if your handwriting speaks well about who you could possibly be and whether that would be a fit for Bond. I'm just saying, that's a, that's a little, that's a little wild, that's a little eccentric, that's a little psycho? <laughs> I mean, where could you, where do you have to like write a cover letter to be employed? Like where? They don't even do that in the military. I don't even think the CIA analyzes your handwriting for any reasons, you know? But this particular woman to work for bond number nine, you have to basically have standards that the government just doesn't measure up to. So yeah, she wants your handwriting, your fingerprint, a hair follicle. No, I'm just playing. She just wants your handwriting. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, I'm not a fan. This woman is a little, a little, ugh, yeah. <laughs> but she's brilliant. Brilliant marketer, brilliant brand manager, brilliant mind for business horrible person for people, horrible person to work for, horrible person to do any type of business with unless you've known her forever and she likes you, you know? Um, not, not a nice person, basically. I'm, I, I don't like supporting Bond. I can't support Bond because of the owner, um, but yeah. And she's done really fascinating things. She's very litigious. I'm not, I might get sued for saying this about her. <laughs> You know, you give your if you give an opinion she doesn't like, she goes after that neck, you know? So maybe she hits me up with a, you better erase that video because you talked about me. You know, and then I'm gonna be like, uh, allegedly, allegedly you're a horrible person. Allegedly. I don't know. You might be great, but allegedly you're a piece of crap to a lot of people. So anyway, I don't support that brand. <laughs> I don't support that brand at all. Also, there is tons of rumors about like how she treated certain clients that look like me. Although now that client that looks like me is one of her biggest supporters, so she never treats them dirty now. But yeah, there was there was a little there was a little something something there. Exactly, allegedly, allegedly, she's a beast. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh no. Um. <laughs> Um, but yeah. Oh, I got a. <laughs> Someone gave me a down vote because I crapped on Bond. It is what it is. I'm not taking it back. Bond is allegedly a crappy brand to support. Um, <laughs> Russell Westbrook has a fragrance with Byredo. Absolutely. I heard it's interesting. Um, I think Tyler has really good taste. Uh, I was really impressed, really impressed with his initial fragrance. It's not a celebrity scent at all, at all, um, at all. It is very, very, very credible for a fragrance design or released by a celebrity. I have to tell you that right now. Um, I love Green Irish Tweed for that rainy day frag reason. Okay, I get that. I also like um, For Him by um, For Him by Narciso Rodriguez, the gray bottle. I don't even know if it's still available, but if it's discontinued, you'll probably be able to get it at a discounter. And it is so beautiful. It is so special. It's like a, it's like, it's like wet cement and perfume. Very, very unique very beautiful in a timeless way. I think you could wear that fragrance now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and you're just gonna smell amazing. You're gonna smell great. Um, big, 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 big fan. Um, anyone knows where I can get Saint Venon 0905 in the US? Please let me know, I would appreciate it greatly. Oh, when I purchased that fragrance, I purchased it at Men New York. I wonder if you can, I wonder if the website of men still offers that fra fragrance. The men's store is no longer open, but I do believe you can purchase that fragrance on um, on the website of Men New York. And if not, um, I would definitely, um, 
I would definitely probably search overseas and see if I can get that bottle mailed to me. Um, something I would consider doing because both that fragrance is next level um, and it's just special. Um, eclectic. So guys, I wanted to talk to you about some fragrances that I have at Bergdorf Goodman. As you all know, I'm live at Bergdorf Goodman every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Again, forgive me for being a little bit late today. It was a long, long day. But I did want to share with you a couple of fragrances from two brands that I really, really find awesome. Two brands that I'm really, really digging more and more these days. And um, they're really beautiful. Uh, one is called, and I'm just going to share it with you right now. So from the house of Loewe, I wanted to share with you all a fragrance called Eclectic. And it's from Loewe's Paula's Ibiza collection. And this fragrance right here, guys, is just a very clean, fresh fragrance that's very creamy. It has notes of ylang ylang, jasmine, orange blossom, coconut, incense, and olibanum with Australian sandalwood, vanilla, and musk at the base. And your top notes is pepper, are, excuse me, pepper and orange. And this is a very, very creamy, kind of like a santan lotion type of fragrance in the world of um, Beach Walk by Margiela, but in my opinion, a lot less sickly sweet and a lot more natural smelling. This fragrance will stay on your skin for about five to six hours in a really comfortable way. Um, I don't know if every guy would want to smell like this fragrance, although I have to say, I sprayed it on myself and it does smell beautiful. It's perfect for that summer fragrance at the beach. It is just a really clean, creamy, warm, with a fresh aspect type of fragrance. And um, I just think it's really, really beautiful. Now, it's called Eclectic. I really smell the ylang ylang in this fragrance. To me, this is like ylang ylang and vanilla, you know? Very, very beachy, very, very easy to wear, absolutely beautiful, and it'll stay on your skin for a nice amount of time. I get anywhere between five and six hours, but it's not gonna fill the room, but it does last, and it's just really, really beautiful and interesting. It's called Paula's Ibiza by Lueve, and the scent is called Eclectic. Now, if you're a person who likes those sweet, creamy experiences with coconut, this could be a fragrance you might absolutely love. I just think it's a very fun scent. And it also, so this is not the way Loewe markets these fragrances, but this particular scent is, in my opinion, perfect for a feminine taste, women. And this one, which is just the Paul is Ibiza without a name, this one to me smells perfect for gentlemen. So in my opinion, both fragrances are very, very beautiful, very interesting, um, approachable, things that you've smelled before, but you're not gonna smell weird or, or I don't know, you're not gonna smell weird at all with these on your skin. But this one, in my opinion, is a lot more woody, a lot greener, and I love the way this one smells. This is, this came out in 2020, and this one, came out in, let's see. And this one came out in the year 2022. So this came out last year, the creamy one. And the woodier one came out two years prior. And this fragrance looks like this. I really, really like this one, guys. This one is a lot woodier, a lot greener, greener a lot less pretty than this. But this is a fragrance that will get you a lot of compliments. I will say that. Now, but this one is a fragrance that I just think, I just enjoy the way it smells. It's not as complimentable, but it's in my opinion, a very, very respectable, a very beautiful take on a woody fragrance for a masculine taste. 
I really, really like this. It's a very green experience on my skin. Um, I mean, extremely green on my skin. Um, it almost smells like you crushed leaves and then you smelled your hand. Um, and it's, let me just share with you the notes in this fragrance. This scent also has coconut in it, but it's not a sweet, creamy coconut. It's a little bit drier. It does add a creaminess to the scent, but it's not like this. It's not like suntan cream. It's more of like a creaminess, but it's hard to like relate it to anything that you've smelled or know. It's really, really interesting. Now this fragrance has galbanum, coconut, mandarin, orange, it has driftwood, frangipani, and narcissus in the middle. And in the base notes, you have ambergris, patchouli, and bourbon vanilla. But again, this one is nowhere near as creamy or as sweet as this one. Both are absolutely attractive and perfect for the weather we're going in. I'm really curious how these fragrances work together. I'm curious. I'm the type that would like to smell that. I'm gonna just... I'm gonna try right now. I'm gonna be a guinea pig, guys. I'm curious, because they have an interesting complimenting vibe. I think, they, I think they can be layered. They easily can be layered, guys. Um, and that's what I also like about these fragrances from Loewe. Um, they're not in their, they're not in Lueve's traditional bottles. These were made basically to, these were made in a collaboration with an artist from Spain. And so they're very much different from what Lueve's done. And I do think they're modern, very attractive, <laughs> and really, really easy to wear. So um, those are really beautiful fragrances from the house of Lueve. Mm, I really, really like the combo of these two fragrances together. Mm. Um, also, both fragrances are definitely under $150, which I also love. You can get both of them for under $150, so you're not spending a ton of money. And I'm talking about the 100 mils. These are 50 mils. Um, cool bottles. They just look inviting and interesting they just make you want to spray them you know i really like these two um and i normally don't like the whole like suntan vanilla -y, creamy fragrances for warm weather i normally don't do that but i like these two together they really work beautifully together i don't know if i would wear this by itself for my taste you know i don't mine fragrances that lean pretty but this might be a little too pretty for me but i do think men can wear it i don't want you to think that you know i would say try it but the combination really kills me and i think the reason is because of this one um the blue cap the blue cap one the the one without a name oh man i'm really 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 a fan of this um fragrance and i also love the fact that it utilizes coconut and, it utilizes coconut and vanilla in a way that doesn't smell like you're wearing coconut and vanilla. I just find it interesting that it's kind of like a background noise, but not a major player. Anyway, guys, um, those are two awesome fragrances that I don't know if you all know about, but I think you should consider them if you don't know about them. They're not everywhere, but you can definitely find them and experience them here at Bergdorf Goodman. Guys, come to Bergdorf, introduce yourself. I'd love to meet you. And if you're not from Berg, if you're not in New York City and you can't smell any of these, just let me know and I'll ship samples to you. Email me at el-aton at themaker.com. Let me see if I have a business card on me. Because if I do, yes, I do. This is giving me all, this is giving a little bit too much information because my car got my number on them. <laughs> anyway, just, just email me at el hyphen a, well, here, I'll write it down for you. Um, and if you'd like, you can always hit me up and I will send you 
samples with no issue. And um, and this is my email, guys. Boom. Hit this person up, and this guy will send you some awesome, 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 awesome samples. So request samples at this email. You're never gonna pay for them. If I have them available, they're just gonna get to you first come, first serve. And again, guys, be patient with me because a lot of people hit me up for samples and sometimes there's a, there's a queue. I'm getting through them, um, but there's a lot of folks in the queue. And sometimes I don't have the fragrances necessary to create your sample pack. So please bear with me, but you're definitely getting them if you sent me your email. I've been sending samples like every every other day because uh, in my in my spare time I'm sending out like five to ten samples every day and I'm getting through it. So yes, I'm almost there, guys. I'm almost done. Please forgive me. But if you'd like to get any sample, just request what you want to try based on the videos or based on what you've seen, and um, I'll do my best to make sure that gets to you and ASAP at that. Um, let's see. I also want to share with you a couple of fragrances from uh, from a brand called Galan, and you already know, guys. I love Galan. Galan is one of my favorite. Um, I guess you could. Galan is one of my favorite designer brands, and I never, at one point, I never considered Galan a um, a. I used to always consider Galan a niche house, but recently, you know since they've been a little bit more, well, commercial, <laughs> and they've been coming out with a load of products like makeup and, you know, skincare, I kind of consider Galan to be a designer brand at this point, but a designer brand that creates very high-end niche quality perfumes, in my opinion. And I wanted to share with you all a couple of fragrances that I thought were really, really beautiful from Guerlain. And the first fragrance is a fragrance that literally just launched this year. And you guys already smelt this fragrance? No, you haven't. <laughs> it's, from a fra it's from the line, the Aqua Allegoria series. But this is a new addition to the Aqua Allegoria series. And this fragrance is called Forte Norolia Vetiver. So this is Norolia Vetiver, but in a much stronger concentration, in a Forte concentration. Forte means fortify, I'm guessing, but that sounds about right. And this fragrance, <laughs> it smells good. When I tell you guys I love this scent, the Vetiver version of Norolia Vetiver it's just a beautifully clean experience. This fragrance is such a beautiful take on fig and vetiver. That is the secret sauce of this fragrance, fig and vetiver. <laughs> it's a fragrance that was not done by Tilly Vasa from Guerlain. And I believe um, Tilly Vasa is Guerlain's in-house perfumer, but this perfume was made by a woman named Delphine Jelk. And Delphine Joke did her thing with this perfume. I don't know if you can read that. Norolia Vetiver. Aqua Allegoria from Galan. And this is the Forte version. The Forte version is the Forte version is basically the stronger, more concentrated version of this fragrance. The issue with this line of perfumes from Galan is that they literally are like toilet waters. They go on your skin to die. You know, like really, really fresh, out of the shower type thing. But this one, this will stick. This will stay on you for at least four hours, which these fragrances from the Aqua Allegoria series never did. So this is an absolute amazing experience and I'm just gonna wear this home because I love this scent so much and um, it's just amazingly beautiful. Absolutely amazing. Um, the fig in this fragrance really stands out. The Neroli, the Bergamot, Pedigran, Fig Leaf, the Vetiver, 
to me, this could be an absolute, like, like this could be like the perfect alternative to, um, to Aqua de Palma's Fico de Amalfi. Fico de Amalfi, beautiful fragrance, a great fig. This could be in that same world, absolutely beautiful. The vetiver in this fragrance is just superb. It's juicy, it's floral, but it's not a floral that comes across too flowery. It's just adding a very, very beautiful, I would say full experience to the fragrance. Florals and perfume is just important. This fragrance does have rose, but it doesn't smell rosy. I think it's just well blended. I get more fig than anything. And the vetiver in this fragrance is special. Gelan's vetivers are some of the best vetivers you can get in a fragrance. And I think this fragrance is special and absolutely beautiful. You're gonna do amazing wearing, wearing this fragrance in the summer. And it's only like, it's under $150. Not a lot of places offer this scent. You can purchase it here with me at Bergdorf Goodman. Um, but I have to say, special next level take on vetiver. It's just clean, 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 and more clean. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, the other fragrance from the Allegoria fragrance line that I wanted you to smell, or <laughs> you can't smell this, but I wanted to talk to you all about, is called <laughs> Mandarin Basilic. Basilic Mandarin from Guerlain. And guys, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. Talk about juicy, juicy, juicy citrus. Um, I am absolutely blown away by Galan's Allegoria line. The Allegoria line is just one of the most amazing cologne experiences in perfumery. But to make these a lot more intense is just really, really cool. Um, I was really blown away because when I smelled this and I sprayed it on my skin, and this one came out in 2022, as well as with this, they both came out in 2022, but so very, very recently, but when I smelled Mandarin Basilic, oh my gosh. So guys, Mandarin orange, basil, cassis, cassis, and I love the scent of cassis. Ugh, green, sweet floral experience, just very fresh. This has orange blossom, honey, Bulgarian rose, anise, but you don't smell like jelly beans, black jelly beans. Um, this has vanilla and sandalwood also. What I love about the Mandarin version of, what I love about the Mandarin, forget it, just. Ah, it is a breath of fresh air. This fragrance smells so natural, it's ridiculous. It's almost as if I can, I'm holding an orange underneath my nose and I'm scraping the peel with my fingernails. That's what this scent smells like. It is um, very juicy, um, has a slight, it is a sweet fragrance due to the honey, the, the orange, the vanilla, uh, the rose, but, and the cassis, which I know there's a lot of cassis and perfumes, they're sweeter. But one of the things I love about it, it is just very, very well done. Very long lasting for this style of scent. I like the way this scent smelled when it was in the original version, but I never could see myself buying it because I don't like wearing fragrances for like two hours. I need at least three to four hours, that, at least, you know, to, to buy a perfume. Um, but this one, another one that gets to the four to five hour mark. It might even go a little longer on you depending on your skin chemistry. These two fragrances from Galan, guys, just amazing, just amazing. If you've never tried these scents, Forte version of Mandarin Basilic and the Forte version of Neroleum Vetiver. If you've never tried these fragrances and you're looking for a summer fragrance, Get your nose on these, smell them. They're very well priced. They're under $150 for 100 mils. And you're smelling really expensive. You're smelling very, very elevated. And you're not smelling like other people in the room. You know, why everybody's smelling like why? You could be smelling like this. 
And you'll smell a lot better, I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> you'll smell way better than the people wearing Y, just saying. Um, so I'm gonna check out what the chat is saying. I'm curious what frequency, well, I'm curious guys, what fragrance finds have you all been really, really into? Um, what new fragrances should I be considering? What new fragrances do I need to get my nose on? I'm really curious what you all are getting into. Um, <laughs> oh no, spill all the tea. -E. <laughs> Loving the inside info on Bond. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, I, uh, you know. <laughs> um, about to pull, about to pull out some of these rare Dior's. Dimashi is one of my favorites in the game. Dimashi is awesome. I just hate what Dior did to Dimashi. Um, Dimashi is one of the best perfumers in fragrance, but Dior did not use Dimashi to his potential. They did not utilize his skills, in my opinion, in their best way. I think Dimashi could have made some, I mean, Dimashi makes very, very beautiful artistic perfumes, but Dior just focused him on basic, unfortunately, um, especially toward the later months of his career with Dior. The new creative director of Dior is not Dimashi, actually. It's going to be um, Francis Kurjan. Francis Kurjan is now the creative director and in-house perfumer of Dior fragrances and has completely assisted Dimashi on to better and bigger things. And I'm hoping that he lands not in one brand. I really want to smell Dimashi's fragrances across multiple brands. So I'm hoping that um, his work gets a lot more um, focused on and I hope that he gets to do things that he wants to do that actually gets to allow him to um, to fulfill his talents because I really don't think Dior used him properly at all I think they were just you know I don't know when you have an artist when you have a person that's in a you know if you had Picasso on your squad right you're not gonna get a graffiti artist to make art you're gonna go to Picasso you know Anyway, um, hopefully he lands somewhere where they love him and give him the support that he deserves because I don't think they were getting that from him. I don't think Dior was giving that to him at all. Um, <laughs> sadly enough. Um, yes. Um, ah, I prefer Paula's Abitha though. The original. Ah. So you like the original version of the, okay, I get that. I really, really love them also. I, I think it's, wait a minute, let me see. The original Paula's. I personally love the Paula's, um, the Paula Ibiza fragrances. Paula's Ibiza, I just think that's fascinating. I thought the original one was my favorite also, Scented Moments, because to me, it's just a little bit more masculine. It's a little bit more my style, but I just find that the eclectic smells attractive. I'm attracted to the scent of this, but I don't want to wear it. I'm attracted to the scent of this, and I do want to wear it, which is, I guess, the one you like. So we're definitely seeing eye to eye on that version, sir. sir. Um, I just think, the Loewe is a brand that I think doesn't get the type of love in the United States that they do in Europe. And I think they're really working hard to change that. They've completely rebranded, made everything in really awesome new bottles. They launched this awesome logo, which is completely, well, it is definitely unique to Loewe and it's been seen a lot more than normal. Um, Loewe has been, doing their thing. As a fashion house, they're getting a lot of love. And as a fragrance house, I think they're definitely awesome. I love Lueve's candles. They have a candle called Tomato Leaf, and it's literally just Tomato Leaf by itself, and it's a candle worth getting. It is that good. It is amazing. Um, yeah, I do agree with you. Lueve has some very classy fragrances, 100%. Um, very, very very fresh, like Lueve has a an aesthetic that's theirs, you know? 
also, if you've ever smelled their like high-end niche line, there's a fragrance called Mayrit that is perfect on any woman's skin, in my opinion. Mayrit is one of my favorite Loewe fragrances to experience. I just think it's next level beautiful. Um, let's see. <laughs> Oh no, the bottle reminds me a little bit of an Astro Pop. I see that. <laughs> I get you 100% on that. And I can't wait to get a couple of Astro Pops in this warm, in the heat. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, never see Lueve at any retail stores. You're so right, my man. And that's why you need to come to Bergdorf Goodman and try them ASAP. Um, and again, if you can try them, email me, reach out to me, and I will definitely send it to you i'll send you a sample here's my email right there hit me up asap and don't forget that hyphen between the l and the a in my first name don't forget that if you don't put that it won't come to me but honestly guys you email me tell me the scent you'd like to try you're getting it you're never gonna pay for that sample and you know there was someone who mentioned to me that like i was they liked my channel a lot more before i was a salesperson I am not a salesperson, guys. You, I haven't. I don't think I made one dollar off of my audience since I started working at Bergdorf. I would love for you all to utilize me if you need, if you need me. But I don't care to make money off of my audience. Like I just love to share my passion about fragrance and offer you options that you haven't tried and smelled before that you need to consider and try. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's not my goal to capitalize off of you. My goal is to introduce you to things that you need to try or that I think you would love to try if you smelled it. So um, I'm a scent matchmaker, you know, that's what I do. And so I would love to match you with the scent that you'll love. That's, that's what I do. Um, but yeah, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. It's not, it's, my guys, like, you all have really, really been, like, the best community of people I can imagine having, and so if I can offer you all something to give back to all the things you've done for me, it would be an honor. Um, <laughs> don't give too much info, man, it's the internet at the end of the day, absolutely, uh, very, very true facts, um, I was about to show my, my phone number. <laughs> no. Um, that would be crazy. Um, I'm always sending samples to folks too. See, you're an amazing guy. You know, um, I just find that awesome. And Mr. Calvarino, one T, not two T's. So E-L hyphen A-T-O-N. That's it right there. Um, and it's a pleasure, guys. Um, Ah, oh, man, I appreciate you, Oscar. Just wanted to say that when I first got into fragrances, I found your videos and you put me on, bro. Thank you from the Bay Area. Oscar, I am so grateful for you, my man. Thank you so much for that message and that comment. Um, absolutely grateful for you. Thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting my channel. I am very grateful for each and every one of you who tune in and come through for me. And even if you don't, if you've watched some of my old channel, um, my old videos, and I'm, I'm just highly appreciative and grateful for all of you. Um, you have no idea. A lot of people don't, a lot of people don't appreciate their audience, but I really, really do. I value you beyond, you have no idea. And I know I was like, you know, kind of out and I, you know, did what I had to do, but trust me and believe that I always had intentions of making, uh, making it up to you all and coming through again and hopefully gaining you as an audience again. And, you know, I know now since I, it's been like three years since I've been on YouTube, I know I have to earn you all again. I have to earn my audience again. And I have no problem with that. If I only have five people watching me, I'm grateful, you know, absolutely grateful. Um, <laughs> you can't read my handwriting, bro. Really? <laughs> Hold on. You can't read my handwriting, brother? Pre really? Really? E L hyphen A T O N at themaker.com. Yeah, I know I'm a little bad with that. Um, I wanted a sample of Roja's Oce Oceania. I may be able to help you. Hit me up. 
I may be able to help you. I love that fragrance. I own that fragrance. It is special. Absolutely special. Ooh. I tried this Guerlain in a Douglas shop here in Romania. Nice to see you guys in Romania. Wow. Um, great scent. Like the fact that it's not in that style of Neroli Portofino. I 100% agree. You're not going to get Neroli Portofino from this. Um, it is using Neroli, but it's not basic. It's not doing what you expect. It's not a scent you've smelled before. The Vetter is definitely a Galan Vetiver. When you smell it, you're like, oh yeah, that's Galan, all right? But it doesn't smell old school. Like this doesn't come across like a fragrance your grandfather would wear. This smells like a fragrance that's very modern, very green, slightly sweet, very, very clean, very refreshing, very, very unique. It smells like Galan though, but it is a unique vetiver. It does not smell like everything on the market at the moment. And definitely it doesn't smell like Neroli Portofino. And it's probably like half the price of Neroli Portofino for double the amount. And it lasts about an hour or two more, if not like two to three hours more. No brainer if you're into that fragrance. If you're into Neroli Portofino by Tom Ford, you gotta try this scent and um, get your nose on it ASAP. Come to Bergdorf, say what's up, and let me show you some stuff. <laughs> oh no, don't asphyxiate yourself on camera. I know, I just over, I cannot help but overspray, guys. Like, and I'm a, like, let's go. This is what I do now. I am a walking cloud and if you don't like it oh well you'll get over it <laughs> oh no charles alexander put me on your email up put up your email again okay so you saw it then um glorious by bodicea the victorious glorious go ahead that is awesome. I really do, really do like Bodicea the Victorious. I wish that brand was a lot more easy to experience in the United States. Um, it is a beautiful line though. Blue Sapphire. Mm. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, oh, nice. Scent of the day, Savoir Fair, Beau Noir. This is a brand I must, 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 must try. I'm gonna probably order a sample pack. Thank you for reminding me, Savoir Faire. Isn't that like a black owned company? I really need to check them out. Like I'm curious. And when I hear about black owned businesses and perfumery, I'm really, really curious because there's not a lot of black people producing fragrance. So, you know, and there's not a lot of black people talking about fragrance. So <laughs> I'm always curious, you know, um, really interesting. Okay, Francis Kurjan makes the best smelling, most bo mostly boring fragrances. I guess, yes, he makes, he makes fragrances that are not over the top, very approachable fragrances that are easy to wear and easy to like, and he does a great job with that style of scent. And every now and then he can do something very, very disruptive and complex and interesting. Like um, everybody, Everybody focuses on Oud Satin Mood, but Oud Silk Mood is a very unique experience for perfume. Um, it's a very interesting fragrance. Probably one of the most interesting fragrances from that line, in my opinion. Um, so Francis Kurjan can put his foot in it if he wants to, um, but he typically wears, makes fragrances that are just very easy to be sold. He makes a lot of commercial stuff. Um, that's his thing, you know? But I do think he can if he wants to. He can create something very, very, very complex, very unique and very interesting, and he has already. Grand Soir, next level beautiful. E, what's your thought on, E, what's your thought on Nishan Sultan Vetiver? Love it. Love it, that's all I can say. <laughs> Huge fan. I don't deal with the house of MFK. It's so overrated. In a lot of ways, there's some overrated things, but in a lot of ways, they make fragrances that are... I don't think they're overrated, though. 
I really don't. I think I think MFK has earned the the love they've given. They've gotten. Uh, I think they've definitely. I think MFK earns that love. Um, Baccarat Rouge is it's it's a been there done that, but it is a very special fragrance. A scent that is literally single handedly shifting the fragrance industry as we know it right now. Um, so. I mean, I don't know if they're basic, but I do understand what you mean. Um, a lot of people only focus on them at the at the expense of other very beautiful fragrances that shouldn't be ignored. So on that level, I get you 100%. Um, uh, but yeah, my favorite uh, my favorite MFK fragrances are vintage now, Squared and Coco Rico. Wait a minute, Squared. Is that the Gautier 2 fragrance? The Gautier Square fragrance, which was like the two bottles that were like sandwiched together and made as one and you would give like your girlfriend one bottle and you'd keep the other and it was like, are you talking about that? I don't remember. Um, but I do love Coco Rico. Coco Rico is the French word for cock -a -doo -doo -doo. I don't know where they get that from. French people are weird. <laughs> I really don't mean that. I love the French. Um, only 37 sprays. Oh, you counted. Interesting. You counted the sprays I gave myself? I probably did more. I just sprayed myself again. Um, ah. I always tell folks, YSL's niche line is so dope, all of them. I have to say, I agree. I really like the gold bottles from the Le Vestier collection from... YSL, I think they're very beautiful, very underrated. Everybody focuses on tuxedo, and some people focus on blouse, but and baby cat, of course. But yeah, really, really great stuff. Um, but yeah, really, really great stuff and absolutely beautiful. Um, let's see. Oh. I'm in San Francisco. I enjoyed the Eritage video. Can't find the EDP and vintage 90s bottle. I was gifted that fragrance from a YouTube friend of mine who is absolutely amazing. I was gifted that fragrance from a YouTube friend of mine who is absolutely amazing and I was so grateful that she did that. It is lovely, an amazing experience. Um, the difference between the old, if you can get a new bottle of Eritage, I don't think it's that crazy different from the classic version. The classic version had a little bit of a, a cosmetic smell to it. It almost reminded me of like old school cosmetic or old school makeup mixed with that beautiful leathery woody experience from Eritage. Um, I would honestly consider just buying a modern version of it because they're really, really beautiful and not that far apart. Um, yeah. I would, I would literally consider it and because um, I have two versions of that fragrance and both of them are beautiful and the modern version is actually more wearable for right now. So, you know, I would just consider that. Uh, yo, SPS, what's up? Got any recommendations for a Vetiver Gourmand? A Vetiver Gourmand. Ooh, I would consider Taffin Le Rouge. Um, this fragrance right here, it's not a gourmand, but it could, mm, Taffin Le Rouge. I'm going to show you this really quickly. I talked about this fragrance on my channel on a couple of lives a bunch of weeks ago, but if you're looking for a fragrance that's an amazing take on vetiver, I'm about to knock your mind. I'm about to show you something really special. This fragrance right here, right? Le Rouge by Taffin. This brand is next level amazing. I love this fragrance. It's a very expensive fragrance, as you can see. I hope that rating out. <laughs> um, I love this fragrance. I love this fragrance. I don't like this fragrance. I love this fragrance. It has ginger, cardamom, sage, magnolia, orris, 
Saffron, Haitian vetiver, and sandalwood. The vetiver, the orris, and the cardamom are the three most prominent notes in that scent, along with saffron and um, sandalwood. But the vetiver and the orris, next level. It doesn't come. It doesn't have like gourmand ingredients like like vanilla. But if you love a a beautiful, warm, spicy kind of like ambery experience. <sighs> You gotta try this one right here. Uh, it's expensive, 425, but at least you're not buying a 50 mil for that amount. Um, it's a 100 mil bottle, and um, in my opinion, I would save $100 a month to buy that scent. If if I didn't own that fragrance, and I was not a fan of spending 400 or more on fragrance, and I was like not a person into spending that kind of money on perfume. I would literally budget. I would put $100 every month aside just so I could get that fragrance because that fragrance, no one smells like that scent. There is no fragrance that I've smelled in perfumery that smells like that fragrance. And every time I wear it, people want to know what I'm wearing, especially in Bergdorf when I'm spraying it like I do and I walk out the store. Oh my God, people are like, what are you wearing? What is that? What is that? I never smelled that before. Where did you get that one? What, you know? all the time. Taffin, Le Rouge. It's next level. Good stuff right there. Um, have you tried Scented Moments? Have you tried Roja Isola Blue? Um, also previously known as Oligarch. Yes, I have. Um, I actually talked about it a couple of weeks ago also. Isola Blue, in, in my opinion, is a much better name for a fragrance than Oligarch. You know, Oligarch is just... It's very tone deaf to come out with a fragrance name Oligarch at this moment when, you know, yeah, when, you know, um, the disparity amongst people with a lot and a little is so wide now to come out with a fragrance that's literally like celebrating Oligarch. I don't know about that. Um, but I do like the new name. Isola Blue is really cool, and it's focused more about the Mediterranean Ocean as opposed to an oligarch's yacht. Still an amazing experience. Very, very, very witty, freshy. Um, although I have to say, oligarch gets a ton of love. It's a beautiful experience. Oligarch, Isola Blue, whatever. I like the new presentation better, though. But regardless of that name, of the scent, that scent doesn't, in my opinion, come close to, um, it doesn't come close to Burlington 1819. Burlington, to, Burlington 1819 is, I think, the best fresh fragrance in the house of Roja. To me, it's the most interesting, the most wearable. I just love Burlington 1819. It lasts forever on me. Um, I love the price point for the amount that you're receiving, a 100 mil for about 385, compared to like 485 for a 50 mil of Oligarch or Isola Blue. Um, I just think uh, Burlington 1819 is one of the best grapefruit experiences and fragrance, hands down. Um, so yes, I have smelled Isola Blue, I like it. I don't love it, but I like it a lot. Um, <laughs> oh my God, those Oud Satin Flankers are so overrated. Only one is overrated, the Oud Satin Mood. No one really focuses on the Oud and no one really focuses on Silk Mood. However, Silk Mood, out of those three, is probably the most interesting of the three moods. And in my opinion, is the most authentically Oudy of the three. Um, at least in that one, I get a little bit of what I would expect Oud to smell like. The other two, it feels like they're Oudy, Oudish, Oud adjacent, but they're not Oud. In my opinion, Silk Mood is the only one offering an Oud experience along with all that jammy other stuff they got going on. Um, yeah. Savoir Faire, yeah, gonna, definitely gonna get that. I, I gotta get a, I got to get um, a sample pack from Savoir Faire. Um, anyway, <laughs> oh no, MFK juices just don't excite me. Baccarat smells so whack. Oh my gosh. Okay, I respect that. 
um, I get, I, I respect your opinion, although I have to tell you, I don't agree. I think, I think, um, I think MFK is, is, is good for a reason. I think they're popular for a reason. I think they are definitely popular for a reason. Um, thanks for recommending Nishan Saffron Colonize. I'm so glad you like it. I love it. Okay, I'm really glad you love it. Saffron Colonies, in my opinion, the Colonies A, mm, great stuff. And you can literally wear that fragrance all year. The freshy version of it is beautiful also, but Saffron is special, absolutely special. Um, just get Roja's Danger. Ah, love it, love it, love it. Roja's Danger is major. Um, I really, really, really love your guys. Like, I, I love your interjections and your feedback, guys. It's so interesting. Um, I just got Dolce and Gabbana's Velvet Black Patchouli. Wearing it the last few days. It is a nice, sweet patchouli that works great for spring and probably summer too. It's not cloying at all. Gotta get my nose on that one. Dolce & Gabbana is a brand, um, especially their niche line, is a line that I kind of overlooked and I don't really focus on and pay attention to. And also because they're not that easy to experience as they're not, they're not accessible, which might be a good thing. I need to get my nose on those. Um, I think you can find them at Saks and Bloomingdale's. Um, on a day off, I need to go and scout those. Fat Electrician from Eldo. It's a Vetiver Gourmand, agreed. A great fragrance. Um, I really, really like Fat Electrician. That's a great, great modern take on a vetiver. And um, ah, Midsummer Nights, Midsummer Nights Dream is a nice fragrance and a nice freshie, and I agree with you on that too. Um, although I feel like that's a freshie I would wear more in the colder weather. Like that's a freshie I would wear in fall, you know, uh, because I just think that's just really, really beautiful. But there's a dark side to that fragrance that's just really interesting. Guys, um, I really want to thank you all for joining this live stream. On my next live stream, next week's live is going to be absolutely amazing, and I hope you all can be a part. Um, I'm going to be interviewing Lev from The Maker. I'm going to be interviewing Lev from The Maker. I'm going to be interviewing... Um, he's going to be sitting down in a sit down with me and we're going to be chatting about fragrances. We're going to be chatting about fresh. He's an amazing entrepreneur who has who has created awesome businesses. He created Fresh, which he sold to LVMH for a ton of money. I don't know if he'll let us know how much money he made, but he made a ton of money and um, he sold that to LVMH and he opened up a new fragrance line called The Maker and I manage that line here at Bergdorf Goodman. And I'd love to interview him because I wanna get his, his insight on creating a brand and um, the decisions that go into making a fragrance and releasing a fragrance and like your target market and i'm really wanting to ask him questions um that will really really be probing focused mostly on business and the things that brands think about or what brands do um and why they do them i'm really really curious to get his insight to learn um like his experience creating amazing successful brands that are awesome and also he's extremely extreme extremely ahead of the time like Levin Alina with fresh and with the maker is doing has done and is doing very very innovative things and we'll talk about that more next week but I am very very excited to bring him on the channel and um, and and yeah get him on here and talk to him about um, and talk to him about the fragrance industry and about creating a fragrance brand. And if any of you are considering at some point coming out with your own line of perfume, he's a great, great resource of information I think that you'll get a lot of information from that might help you and might inspire you to be the next amazing entrepreneur in the world of beauty. So I'm really excited to have Lev. Lev Glasman is his name, and he is the owner of the Maker Fragrances, the brand that I work with at Bergdorf and Good at Bergdorf and Goodman at Bergdorf Goodman, and he's also um, the founder of the fra of the beauty brand Fresh. He's also the founder of the Maker Hotel and the Maker Fragrance and and Candle Line. Um, a very 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 smart entrepreneur, and I cannot wait 
I cannot wait to tap his brain and get some answers from you all. And please be free to ask questions also. I'll be grabbing questions from the chat to ask him also. So I cannot wait to show you all the brilliant mind that this man comes with. And I cannot wait to ask him questions and to get his opinion on a lot of things that I wanna learn about um, in the world of perfume. So I'm excited, I'm really excited. And I hope you all join me, please join me next week on the third, uh, Wednesday from six to seven. I don't know if I'm gonna be live at Bergdorf. I think I might be live at the Maker Shop on 16th Street and 7th Avenue in New York City. And um, you're gonna really like the way that store looks. It's a beautiful space. Uh, I'm really excited to be there. So anyway, guys, I'm so grateful. Please on your way out, hit that like button. I'm really grateful for you all coming through. Please hit that like button. Um, it really helps the channel. And as you know, my channel is shifting a little bit. I'm focusing more on live stream and not edited videos, although I will be doing edited content. It's just that I need an editor and I'm, a, I'm scouting editors now to, uh, to help me. Uh, but please hit the like button on your way out. It was such a pleasure to chat with you. I hope you've all enjoyed hearing about these really beautiful um, hidden gems that people are not really focusing on, but should. Again, Norolia Vetiver from the Allegoria collection. And this one is the Mandarin Basilic Basil and Mandarin Vetiver. Beautiful Vetiver right here. Vetiver and fig, mandarin and basil, next level. And of course, Paula's Ibiza from Lueve. Ah, there we go. Eclectic, eclectic and the original. This came out first, this came out last year. Beautiful, beautiful options. Prettier, handsomer, wear them together, smell amazing. That's what I would suggest. Um, and guys, I'm gonna be chatting with you next week and going over a very, very, very brilliant brain. So we're gonna be talking and I look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you so much for joining this live stream, guys. Please share, comment, and hit the like button if you can on your way out and I will be seeing you next week and it's a pleasure. Stay blessed and I'm E and this is Simply Put -a Sense. And I'm Simply, O-U-T. Peace.